Go ahead. It's important for us to realize that God is communicating with all flesh, that sinners and saints. Mm. And uh, don't think that you're the only one hearing from him. Huh? He is talking. He wants to talk. He's up rising. He's, he's letting everybody know. He's up earlier than you are because he never slumbers and he never sleeps. Amen. And he's talking day and night. From, from our perspective, it's 24-7. He is speaking. He's mm -hmm. sharing his heart, glory to God, with mm -hmm. all flesh. And, and so we're going to emphasize uh, dreams tonight, but really it's all about all three of these. He is talking uh, to the people in the earth, all flesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's just start with uh, our basic core scripture here, and that's uh, Acts 2.17. I'll ask Sherry to read that. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Okay. And I want to go right into uh, Proverbs uh, 25.2, which is the next verse I have here. And I'll ask Sherry to read that because, see, God conceals things, uh, but he conceals it not uh, away from you. Uh, uh, it's a secret, but he wants you to find it. But it's your responsibility to find what he's talking about and how it operates. All right. Proverbs 25, uh, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings, that's you and me, is to search out a matter. Okay, so Romans 5, 17 says we're going to rule in this life. Rule, you rule in this life. And so he has secrets. He has mysteries for you to find out. Now, the natural mind, the carnal mind is not going to find those out. It's a spiritual mind. Uh, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, if, so God has uh, mysteries that he wants to share with everybody, but it's going to take spiritually minded, the spiritually minded people. These are the ones. And so you, people a lot of times want to filter what God is saying through their carnal mind. Mm, mm, and the carnal mm. mind is so hostile. To God. It's an enemy to God. And so it's just not going to understand. Now the, the passion translation uh, does uh, uh, Proverbs 25, 2, uh, it, it says that his revelation is concealed in his glory. Mm, God's revelation is concealed in his glory. And so mm. you, you need to go into his glory. Oh, praise uh, God. Press into his glory to find the revelation and then, and then search it out. Oh, hallelujah. This is an exciting message I'm, I'm excited about, but I want mm. you to know that, that, uh, See, if we look at the gifts of the Spirit, we'd have tongues and we'd have interpretation. And so the tongues by itself it is not going to benefit us as much as if we have the tongues and interpretation. And, and so a tongues and interpretation is equivalent to a prophecy. Well, it's similar on dreams. You have to have dreams interpreted. And so the dreams plus the interpretation it is is a high level of revelation of his of his uh, mm -hmm. uh, of very being and, and uh, what he wants to show us. And, and what I want to say, this is a real basic point: context is king. Oh, hallelujah! You have to recognize when he's speaking to you what is the context mm -hmm. that he's speaking mm -hmm. to you in. Now, most uh, people are just adrift on the sea of humanity. Mm -hmm. So it, if you can picture someone out in the Atlantic and just drifting with the currents and with the <laughs> winds, uh, giving them direction is not going to be very helpful. Uh, they're, they're going to just uh, uh, not take it. They're, they're not going to value direction. So they're just drifting. If they're just drifting on the currents and, and God comes up to them and says, well, New York is uh, so many hundred miles away in that direction, and London is uh, so many hundred miles in that direction. It doesn't mean much 
to people who are just drifting. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do anything with it. And so let me say to begin with, you need to have a context. And I believe the way you get that context it is to begin to develop a relationship with God and pursue God and ask him some questions. And it's best by you communicating with him and, and finding out what kind of questions you're going to anchor in there. And this is your passion that I'm looking for. And I'll give you my, my questions that I ask God. And this puts a context uh, for when he speaks to me, I know they're going to answer these questions because this is what I have prayed and I've asked him and these are the questions that that he has uh, shown me uh, for me. I want a greater revelation of him. A and these are the two questions then. It all relates to a greater revelation. A greater revelation. Hallelujah. So I can trust him more. How can I trust you more? A and I, I want to talk about greater revelation. Mm -hmm. I want greater revelation revelation, so that I'll understand you more, God, and I can, I, trust you. I can trust you more. And the second question is, how can I be more trustworthy? I need a greater revelation of who I'm becoming. So it's all about the my relationship with him. How can I have a greater revelation uh, to, to know him better? And how uh, can I have a greater revelation so that I can become uh, who he is telling me to be, who he wants to me to be, who I am becoming and who he is becoming for me at this point in my life? Who is he becoming for me and who am I becoming in Christ? And so with those questions, those are the, the questions of my heart. Those are the questions of, uh, that I have a passion to, to find out. And, and so it, it's going to be uh, what he reveals to me. And I have to seek that revelation. You know, it says, seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. So we've got to be pursuing him, seeking him. But if we're just adrift in the sea of humanity, we can get prophecies, we can get dreams, and we can get visions, but it we don't value them. And so you have to have context of, that you're going after God. You're pursuing God. When you run after him, he'll run after you. And then those prophecies, dreams, and visions will begin to make a lot of sense to you. And that's be profitable to you. They, they'll be profitable. They, they will give you direction in your life. And uh, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, Sherry, is a seer and and she sees visions and of course she prophesies and and i i primarily dream dreams but i prophesy and i see visions so we operate in all of those but but if we don't spend time in his presence and go in there mm -hmm. and find out what the mystery means yes then it's basically meaningless to us and so I'm going to give you some pointers tonight and just some personal experiences because we've been uh, doing this uh, for 40 years. But I want to talk about categories and symbols because these are very important. And the categories really go across all three of these prophecies, dreams, and, and visions. visions, and then the symbols. You may have these symbols. And of course, there are a lot more categories. There's a lot, a lot more, more symbols. symbols. But this is a way to begin to interpret your dreams. And the reason, uh, and again, I'm focusing on dreams tonight. The reason that dreams are important is that sinners are out there. They're getting mm -hmm. dreams. Mm -hmm. And if the, if the people in the church don't go to them and interpret their dreams, help them understand what their dreams are, help them understand what their visions are, help them understand the prophecies, mm -hmm. then what's going to happen? They're going to run uh, to... Uh, false idols. Yes. So it's either we are going to help them understand what God is communicating with them, or they're going to go out because God is putting things in people's heart and they don't know the answer, and they're going to have, they're going to be looking for the answer. Amen. And we can present the answer to them, which is the gospel and Jesus Christ, or, or we can let them run out 
to, to the fortune teller to the fortune teller and the mystics and i i guarantee you go on the internet and and people will uh be willing to interpret your dreams mm, for, for a money, price for yeah. money oh that's, Mucho dinero. that's not what we want okay so there are two basic things we need to know here and one is that everything is anchored in the word of oh, god amen. Amen. and the spirit of god and so we have to take both of these things and so to interpret dreams or visions uh we're going to have to refer it back to the scriptures and so ask us ask the lord for a scripture if you dream a dream ask the lord about a scripture that you can base it on but also rely on the holy spirit to guide you so you need to be building a relationship with the holy spirit also the carnal mind is going to be hostile against god mm -hmm. so you've got to renew your mind that's right and the way you renew your mind is submit to him on the altar put your whole life on the altar and uh, he will begin to renew your mind from that so there's a lot of steps that go into this but we're just jumping right into the nitty gritty nitty gritty, uh, nitty -gritty tonight <laughs> and i want to say you can interpret your dreams uh, don't don't think that you have to rely on somebody else because you have the holy spirit amen and you have, have access to the word of god and, and so ask the holy spirit to guide you into the word of god and how that operates but with that i'm going to do some pretty practical teaching tonight and, and i'm going to talk about seven different categories and i'll give you a few examples as we go along mm -hmm. uh, the first category and we're going to go back to job verse 33 and this kind of tells you that he speaks to us in different ways and so this is my introduction to categories <clears throat> job 33 verses 14 through 18 for god may speak in one way or in another or another yet man does not perceive it in a dream in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deeds and conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So you don't want to be destroyed. And if you're not listening to his communication, it's going to cause you to go down the wrong oh, that's pathway. That's exactly right. So I've got seven categories I want to talk about. These are things God has shown us over the years. Number one is about communication, that, that God communicates. And these will apply them tonight primarily to dreams, but they apply across the board. Okay, so the first one is communication. And what Job just said, he opens your ears. He opens your ear, so he's communicating with you. He is opening your ear so that you can hear mm, what he's mm. saying. And, and one of the dreams that I have that I'm going to tell you about now, this is one of the most important dreams that I ever had in my life, and it was 40 years ago. And, and I saw a little mouse, and that mouse had a, uh, it's almost a human ear on it. It's a real big ear. And I don't big know what, ear. I don't know if it's just one ear or two ears because I always saw it from the side, <laughs> but it's almost a human. And, and so I knew that little mouse was me and that God was opening my ear. He Hallelujah. was opening my Hallelujah. ear so I could hear. And, and uh, then that little mouse scurried away. Okay. So you might say, well, that uh, wasn't much of that dream, but I tell you again, <laughs> It was one of the most significant <laughs> dreams in my life Amen. because it gave me some real guidance because I knew from that dream, this is the interpretation, that my ear was being open to him and I was listening to him. You know, and go back right to the scripture. Matthew uh, 13, uh, 43 says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. That's what Jesus said. And I knew that was me. Uh, here's Here it is in the scripture, the symbol. The symbol was the ear. Listen, he who has an ear to mm -hmm. hear, let him hear. Okay. So I was raised in a denomination and I, I saw myself being in the, that denomination all my life. And I would go to those church services on Sunday morning and 
midweek and, mm. and and for the rest of my life that's what i was expecting but uh god began to uh speak to me uh, a number of years ago and and so in that dream i knew that i was hearing from the lord and i knew that he was giving me the instruction to leave that denomination the real critical issue we were facing at the time is that our daughter had just been diagnosed that she was going to die and uh, a baby daughter <clears throat> And I knew the people around me uh, were loving, sweet people, and we loved them, but they had no clue about faith or healing or anything supernatural. It was all mm -hmm. uh, basically about evangelism. And I knew if I was going, uh, if we were going to make it as a family, that we had to go someplace where people believed in the supernatural Amen. realm. Amen. So with that dream, then I left my denomination that I had been raised in and I went out and I was like Abraham. I didn't know where I was going, but he showed me the way step by step over my lifetime. And so that was the first. I needed something supernatural to hold on to, thinking that he was telling me to leave that denomination and really looking back on it, is because there was nobody that believed in healing around me. No, and we needed healings and miracles in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so we had to go out, uh, separate ourselves from the unbelievers. And, and, and we did that. And what's really interesting, there was a, a colleague of mine at the time, a dear friend that was experiencing some health issues himself. And he basically was in the same denomination, although we weren't in the same church. And he went, uh, and he found uh, basically the same place I did. Uh, and the difference between him and me was that he had a foot in the religious world and a foot in the spiritual world, mm -hmm. and he died. And we just mm -hmm. sold out completely to God, and God healed Amen. our daughter and, and gave her a miracle. Amen. And uh, we saw our face uh, earlier tonight, saw her on here Hallelujah. Uh, and, and so... That was the first dream, one of the most significant dreams. I'm going to go through these others um, quickly, but uh, warning dreams. Um, mm -hmm. He can come to you in a warning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one dream that uh, I had, we were thinking about investing in some property. And in a dream, I saw of the house we were considering buying. And uh, in front of it was a tree. And in the tree, I saw a snake drop out. Well, the snake, you know, was in the uh, garden, garden of, Eden. of Eden. And then uh, Jesus said, uh, the devil is the liar and the father of lies. And the great serpent. Uh, and uh, so I knew that snake represented the deception and lies. And sure enough, after that, but, but see, I followed that dream and I didn't go ahead and buy the property. But after that, we were told that there was asbestos problems uh in that house and they didn't tell us we were they tried to deceive us but god showed us the amen, truth amen. hallelujah amen third uh I, i'm going to go through these quickly seven things seven different categories this will help you uh to interpret begin to interpret your own dreams third one is on direction uh, dreams can give you direction and uh, about where to go what to do uh for example, here's a dream I had. Um, this is a prophetic dream because I saw uh, two church uh, congregations in their buildings uh, in another city. And when I went there, mm -hmm. uh, when I went there, there were no <laughs> there were no congregations. Yeah, they were well, one was a school, a vacant school, mm -hmm. and the windows were broken out. And there were weeds all over it. Went to the other property, which never had never been a church building either. It had been a place where livestock were. Right. And, and it was a sale were, barn. And there were weeds and, and the waist high weeds around it. But, you know, we prayed and interceded. And within weeks, there were congregations in those places where there had never been congregations before. And they were worshiping God because that was the direction God was giving me to go there and prepare those places uh, for his will and bring his will uh, on the earth. To bring heaven to earth. <laughs> okay. Now you can also uh, have counsel about us, about whatever situation you're in. This is, this is number four, counsel 
about your situation. And one dream I think about that one night I, I saw a uh, an actor on the stage and he did certain motions and he pulled off his jacket and, and he cert did certain things and I, I didn't know for sure what it was, but you know, the, entertainer. The, the, the next night I, I went to a church uh, meeting, congregation service, and uh, the we had a visiting uh, minister there that night and he did exactly the same motions this other, the actor had done. Uh, the entertainer had done and he pulled off his jacket and he made up the exact same moves. And, and I knew by that, that God was telling me, don't get drawn in to what he's saying because he's just an actor. He's not real. He's a pretender. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Now, uh, uh, the uh, fifth uh, uh, category I want to talk about are instructions. Now, I may be going fast here, but you can always review this video. It'll be up tomorrow, uh, and, and both on Facebook and on YouTube. And so you can own your instructions. You know, Jesus said, my word, by my word, you're clean. That's yes, uh, John again. 15, 3. And so uh, building that relationship uh, with the Lord. And that's what I was talking about a while ago. It's all about your relationship. Your relationship with God determines the context for the dreams, visions, and prophecies. And, and if you don't have a close relationship and you're not pressing into him and you're not seeking him, then those things will not matter yeah. to you. <laughs> That's right. But if you're pressing into him, he's going to show you things uh, that will move you to a higher and a higher level. You know, uh, Sherry talked about uh, uh, a lot of people are in a comfort zone. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not in the comfort zone. I won't go higher and higher. But if you're just drifting uh, on the sea of humanity, uh, communicating with God and his communicating with you is not going to matter. He, you're just going, you're not going to value it. You're not going to pursue it. But these things you have to pursue. You have to uh, uncover uh, the mysteries. Another thing, and this is number six, and remember I have seven categories, is potential. It releases dreams, uh, can release potential. And I think about uh, Joseph, when he was a young boy, he, he dreamed about being a ruler. Oh, it yeah. released, see, he began to speak those things out. He began to speak those things out that he was going to be a ruler. And, and when he got, uh, it went through a lot of things. And we all go through things, but when he became the ruler of Egypt, uh, I believe it's uh, Genesis 45, 8, and, the, and his brothers came to him and he said, you didn't send me here. God sent me here. Amen. And I'm a father to Pharaoh. See, this is God's plan. That was God's plan uh, for Joseph. Uh, I'm, uh, hallelujah, I'm head of his household and I'm ruler over Egypt. That's what Joseph said. The, they didn't do it. God did it. So he began to speak it out. When you have those dreams, you begin to uh, to speak them out. You begin to act on them. Uh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And it releases the potential. It also drives... Oh, I have... Okay, sure you have something. Well, one about the potential, and that is I've had three dreams about Vietnam. And I've never been to Vietnam uh, in in person, but I have had those three dreams. And in the three dreams... I am sitting in the middle of a, a jungle area and on with uh, there was a little house with a porch and a rocking chair and I'm rocking back and forth and in all three of these dreams are similar so I'm just going to give you one and here I see some um, Vietnamese people uh, with a person on a stretcher and they're coming through the jungle and they come to the porch where I am and they say to me uh, they say to me we have heard that you uh, uh, have a gift of healing and this person is very sick this person is dying can you pray for them and I come I get out of my rocking chair and come down off the porch and go over and pray for the man on the stretcher and the man raises up gets up and walks and that the in when i had that dream it just released something in me that 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 gift of healing 
uh, was to be used for the people. It was to be activated and it was to be, um, God wanted to use that, uh, that gift. And so it did, it released that potential in me. I have one more. Okay. And that is uh, an example about a warning dream. Uh, our son was in drugs and in and, and big time. Uh, he was a, a distributor. He was a user. He was, he manufactured them. And for, he did that for about 20 years. And uh, one night I dreamed. And I saw it was like uh, it was in Sicily or Italy and how they did their funeral processions going up uh, a hillside uh, with the casket. They were carrying the casket and I and I had this dream and and when they got to the cemetery. Uh, they opened up the casket and when they did, I saw my oldest son laying dead in the casket. Now, when I woke up the next morning, I knew that I needed to go into intercession. I needed to go not just not just prayer. I'm talking about interceding and for him. And two days later, the police picked him up and he in jail. He turned his life uh, back to the Lord and he's now serving the Lord. And I give the Lord all the praise. But that was a warning dream. Okay, the thing about dreams, are they're not a fix. They're not fixed. They're not the final say. They're something that you can do to change it. And the thing you do to change it mm. is to pray. Amen. So I'll, bring, I'll mention that again later. And the seventh category I want to talk about, which it relates to what Sherry just said, and you can drive back evil. Mm -hmm. You can drive back evil. Uh, God will show you uh, evil, show you where its plan is uh, because it's hidden. It's it's uh, uh, around the corner and back amen, uh, hidden. Amen. But God will reveal it to you, and He'll reveal it to you through prophecies, dreams, and visions, so that you can drive it back. Now there is a difference between uh, uh, dreams and visions, and and visions are generally more literal. You actually see it, you know it. The uh, the dreams uh, you're going to have to search them out more. There has to be that interpretation with it. Now, I also have uh, eight categories about symbols. There's lots of symbols in the Bible, uh, but I want to start here with in Genesis 40 and just read a couple of uh, quick passages in 40. And this is about Joseph when he's in prison and he interprets uh, dreams for a baker and a cupbearer. Uh, these were officials of Pharaoh. Just read these verses quickly. Okay, Genesis 40, 12, and 13. Then Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and, and restore you to your office. And you will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand as in your former practice when you were his cupbearer. Okay, here's the baker. Okay, the baker. Then Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation. The three baskets are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and will hang you on a wooden post and the birds will eat your flesh. Okay, so they oh, had dreams. Yeah. Uh, and so it wasn't wow. exactly the same in both cases. Uh, one of them had uh, seen uh, three uh, branches with clusters of grapes, and he took those and made wine, gave it to the uh, to the Pharaoh, and so his job was going to be restored. But the baker, there was he also had he saw three things. There were three baskets of pastries and breads, and, and uh, but the birds were eating them, and so from that uh, Joseph knew that uh, when that he was going to be lifted up in his head rather than being restored. Uh, to his position, it was going to, he was going to be hanged and uh, the birds were going to come and eat his flesh. So what I want you to see here, there are symbols. There's symbols throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. and, and that is our reference. That's the, I, the thing that anchors our dreams. Ask the Lord uh, for scriptures about your dreams uh, that you have. I just quickly want to go through eight uh, 
uh, eight different symbols that uh, were important to have been important to us. And number one is snakes. I just mentioned those. Those are lies. You have snakes. A lot of people have snakes uh, in their dreams. Those are lies. You better watch out for it. Deception. There's somebody well, is lying or, or trying to deceive you or uh, somehow involved. Okay. Uh, number two is you may be flying or going to a higher level, going up a mountain. All of those things relate to high, rising up with the Lord, being able to see things on the earth from a uh, heavenly perspective. Yeah, heavenly perspective. Glory to God. Third is their people, their symbols and people. Now, I would say most of your dreams will be about you. And only if the Holy Spirit actually says it's about somebody else, now, would it be about somebody else. So you take, first of all, just assume this dream is about me, even though it has other people in it. How do they apply to me? How do these people? Well, if it's your boss and you have a, uh, you have uh, your boss in your dream or somebody over you or an authority over you, it might be that you're going to be uh, promoted to a higher uh, position. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So uh, what, what matters a lot is how are you feeling in the dream? What, what is your, what are your thoughts uh, during the dream? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, are you feel comfortable? Are you, do you are feel you fear? peaceful or, or on the other hand, is it uh, fear? Okay, so number three then is people look at the people, not just their names, but also look at their positions and how they relate uh, to you. Uh, number, oh hallelujah, number four <laughs> is the weapons. It, mm -hmm. You may have a little bitty gun, and you may have a big a machine gun, a big cannon, well, because that might relate to spiritual warfare and, and what kind of weapons you need, uh, because your weapons are mighty. Hallelujah. Now, number five is about vehicles. Uh, and this relates mm -hmm. to your ministry and to your uh, family. family. And is it a little bitty uh, vehicle like a Volkswagen or is it a, is a big uh, car with a lot of power? And, and so those relate to how, what's happening in your ministry, let's say. And so that, that's a possibility. I'm just giving you some guidance here uh, to let you know that you can interpret uh, your uh, dream. So you need to know what categories it is, uh, whether it's a positive dream, a negative dream. And these symbols can be positive or they can be negative. That's the reason you need the Holy Spirit. That's the reason you need words, uh, the word of God on a particular, uh, particular subject. Uh, uh, another, and this is uh, the sixth, and this is water. It, it, the water is often represented by the Spirit of God. It may be a waterfall. It may mm -hmm. be a river. Uh, rain coming down. That's a blessing from mm -hmm. heaven. Okay, so you, you need to uh, consider these things. And, and then number six are hallways. Hallways. Number seven. Mm. I'm sorry, seven. You're right. Hallways represent transition. A, a traveling transition. Maybe going from one place to another place. And, and also, you have doors. And that's number eight. And so doors can be open or they can be closed. And if they're a closed door, it may be a secret. There may be something behind it you need to find out about. And so how are you feeling walking down this uh, hallway? Is there lights? Is there darkness? All of these things, take all of these things into account. And now let me tell you this, that knowing the symbol is not the end of the interpretation. That's just the first step. Uh, because it's all by the Holy Spirit. It's by the Word of God. Amen. It's by the Holy Spirit. And don't think just because I know the symbol, I know what the symbol means, mm -hmm. that I have the interpretation. No. <laughs> See, if you if you could boil it down to a formula and, and uh, you could uh, decide what the dream means by your logic, you don't need faith. And you don't need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. But it's the Holy Spirit that gives you the advantage that the hallelujah. world doesn't have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the light on the word of God. And that's what's going to give you the interpretation and the Holy Spirit. And because the Holy Spirit's going to search the deep things. And see, we're talking about deep communication that's in a mystery, that's in secrets, but it's for you. You know, the disciples came up to Jesus in uh, uh, Matthew 13 and said, why do you speak in parables? Why, why are you talking about these things in mysteries? And he said, it's for you to know and for those people over there that are outside the kingdom. 
They don't know. Oh, hallelujah. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a hidden thing. And, and, and it has to be searched out. Carnal mind cannot get it. That's Logic, right. human thinking cannot get the meaning uh, of dreams and visions. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to be by the interpretation and guidance of the Holy Spirit and anchored in the Word of God. Amen. Now, Amen. I, I just want to highlight here. You, you need for to interpret your dreams. You need some context for that. Don't just be on the sea uh, of humanity and say, I'm just drifting wherever uh, the winds and the currents take me. No. You, you begin to press into God and find out what the questions are <laughs> that you need to be asking him. You need greater revelation. If He said, woe to those that are at ease in Zion. Zion. So if you're comfortable and you're in a comfort zone, it, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to have to be pressing mm -hmm. into God. This is a this is a lifetime of learning and, and to a lifetime of building a relationship with God, and that relationship should be growing day by day, day because day by day. the kingdom of God is within you, and the kingdom of God is ever increasing. It should be ever increasing in you, you not just out there somewhere uh, with other people, but it should be in you, ever increasing. And, and so to be pressing into that, that you want to know what God has for you, you have a passion for it, he's going to show you more and more, more revelation, and, and, and glory to God, you can walk into the glory and go closer and grow closer and closer mm. to him. Mm. And, and you, he was communicating with you. Hallelujah. And in many different ways, you do not block him from any way. Dreams in particular, I, I've had a lot of experience with dreams and this is what I have found. If I make preparation to write down what the dream is, mm -hmm. if I have paper and pen, uh, at easy access in the night, I will have dreams and I will write about them. But if I don't make preparation, if I don't have a paper and pen uh, with an easy access to me, I don't get dreams that night. I, that, in other words, they just go by and I don't. They don't mean anything. I don't value them. But if I value them, I'm going to record them in the night. I don't wait till the next day. Now, if it's a vivid dream. If it is a vivid dream and you think it's from God, uh, then you ought to be writing it down. If it's a, those are where I put my priorities. Let's say it this way. I put my priorities on those things that are vivid. Mm -hmm. And I remember like that little mouse with the ear. I, 40 years ago, I still see it. I still see the movement it made. And I have had many, many other dreams. And those that were really stuck with me, those were the ones from God. And I had to search them out. I had to find out what those meant. But if you, they're not valuable to you, you'll let it drop. And God is trying to keep you from destruction. Thank you for being here. Amen. I'm going to turn Amen. over to Sherry. Amen. She may have something to say. <laughs> I think it's wonderful that God is communicating with us. And there is an increase. Uh, of everything that God is doing, there's an acceleration going on, and also there is a a seriousness, uh, an urgency uh, about God communicating with us because we are in the last days, and Jesus is coming back soon, and there are many things that He is wanting us to do uh, for His kingdom, and so this is one of the reasons that we wanted to to bring this before you tonight so i'm going to open